For many years, I've been looking for lenses that produce great bokeh. After trying out various brands and lens mounts, I decided to focus on M42 screw mount lenses. The best M42 lenses, despite being over 40 years old, can produce amazing results, often better than much more expensive modern primes. They're great value for money and a lot of fun to use manually, and they can easily be adapted to most digital cameras. I posted four separate videos about the best lenses divided into four lens groups. Wider than 50mm, 50mm, the classic fast 50s, 55 to 58mm, and over 58mm. I haven't tried every single old lens that was made in each group, but I've selected most of the highest rated lenses, with one or two exceptions that I'll mention as I go along. In this video, I'm going to recommend the best 50mm lenses. I've included some photos to back up my recommendations and provided a link below to my Flickr stream where my photos taken with these lenses have had over 7 million views. Before we start looking at the lenses, a few words about what makes a great bokeh lens. Good lenses produce smooth blur that is not too distracting or busy, that helps isolate faces or objects and gives an image a 3D look. Another feature of a good lens is that it's sharp wide open and produces relatively seamless transitions between in and out of focus areas. However, the great bokeh lenses can produce more than this. Some of the best lenses produce lovely, dreamy, almost watercolour images. Interestingly, a number of these lenses are older lenses with limited coatings. They flare a bit more, they have lower colour contrasts, but after some post-processing, they produce beautiful results. Lenses that produce clear and smooth bokeh bubbles can really enhance an image. Some photographers also like onion ring effects, but I personally find rings distracting in most cases. Then there are the famous bokeh swirls, a trademark of the Russian Helios lenses, and some others. And bokeh is not just about wide open shots. Some lenses can produce an extraordinary range of effects stopped down in the right conditions. Star bursts, fascinating shapes and flares, for example. The best bokeh lenses I'm talking about will have a strong combination of these characteristics. Now onto the 50mm lenses. This is a most competitive group with some legendary lenses from Japan, East Germany and Russia. Let's start with the three East German lenses. The Carl Zeiss Jena Tessa 50f 2.8 is one of the oldest optical designs of all consumer lenses. It's a little slower than most fast 50s, but that doesn't seem to matter a great deal with this lens. The lens produces good, smooth bokeh wide open without distracting artifacts. Stop down, it's quite busy and it's not as good as the next Zeiss lens here, the Pan Color. The Pan Color 50 f1.8 here is the 8 blades version. Later versions had 6 blades. The glass in this lens is radioactive. It's really quite discolored. It wasn't like this when they first produced the glass, but over time it's turned this yellow brown color. You can cure the glass in sunlight or under UV light, but I've left it like this because I absolutely love the golden hues this discolored glass produces. And it can be very sharp, wide open. The Mayer Optic Gerlitz Oriston 50 f1.8 is another excellent bokeh lens, quite underrated in my opinion, not expensive to buy. The bokeh is attractive with large clean bokeh balls and the colors are good too after some processing. So how does the Oriston compare to the pan color? Well, the Oriston's good, but with the pan color's smooth tones and sharpness, it's the clear winner. The next lens to compare with the pan color is this Russian Zenitar M50 f1.7. The Zenitar has got a strong reputation. Some people think it's optically the best M42 Fast 50 from Russia, better than the Helios 44s, for example. Optically, I tend to agree, although it doesn't swirl like the Helios. You may not be surprised to learn that this is another radioactive lens. The bokeh is nice and smooth, and the colors are amongst the best of this Fast 50 group. I personally find the bokeh isn't quite as gorgeous as the pan color, so my overall vote goes to the pan color. Onto the Japanese lenses and these three Takuma 50 f1.4s. Firstly, there's the legendary early Super Takuma with eight elements. It was designed to outperform the German lenses. Secondly, the Super Multi-Coated Takuma. This lens has radioactive glass and has seven elements. Thirdly, the SMC Takuma. It has a slightly redesigned body and it isn't radioactive. 
I've used these lenses for many years and straight off the bat I'm going to say that the SMC is a good lens, bordering on a great lens, but not quite in the same league as the other two. The Super Multi-Coated Takuma is the best rendering of the three overall. The radioactive glass is superb, maybe a little dangerous, but superb. The early Super Takuma has the best bokeh wide open. So given we're looking at bokeh, my pick is the 8 element version. And here are some photos from the Super Takuma. These photos have all had some processing and color contrast boosts, but the raw material is excellent to start with. The images are sharp enough wide open, and the lens renders beautifully with good transitions and a very dreamy quality to the bokeh. Another Takuma that's worth considering is the Macro Takuma 50 f4. Macro lenses can produce beautifully smooth bokeh wide open, taking close-up shots. Even at a relatively slow f4, this lens produces lovely smooth bokeh in bright light. The macro sharpness of the lens really helps to produce a strong isolation and a good 3D effect. This lens could actually win the 50mm category, however it has two big disadvantages. Firstly, f4 really is a bit slow and the light is not so bright and stop down, the bokeh is not so good. The blades can produce these rather ugly hexagons with sawtooth edges. Because of these issues, the Takuma 51.4 is still the winner here. There are three other Japanese lenses here, two from Yashica, and almost certainly made by the legendary Tomioka company, and a Cosina. The Cosina 50 f1.7 is an interesting lens because it produces swirly bokeh. But overall, the bokeh is not as good as either of the Yashikas. The older Yashika, 50 f2, is a cute lens. It's very highly regarded by users and YouTube bloggers. Nice bokeh wide open and sharp stop down. I don't know whether I lucked out on a great copy of this other Yashika, DF 1.7, but it really is good. I actually prefer it to the older lens, perhaps because it too has radioactive glass. How does a Yashica measure up to the Takuma f1.4? Well, the Takuma is my choice. It's faster, and it produces a narrow depth of field to the Yashica's 1.7. There are other 1.4 M42 lenses, including ones made by Yashica and Chinon, but speed isn't everything. The key point is that the wide open smoothness of the Takuma's bokeh is sublime. It has such a lovely painterly look. This just leaves the pan color versus the Super Takuma. Despite so many Fast 50 competitors, I'm confident that the Takuma and the Pan Color are two of the very best bokeh lenses out there. If I was going to swap the Pan Color for any other M42 50mm lens, I'd possibly go for the much more expensive Zeiss Ultron f1.8, but I've never seen the advantage, purely in terms of bokeh, of doing that. I'm a huge fan of this early 8 element Takuma, however I'm going to say that the Pan Color just edges the Takuma as a bokeh lens. It may be that the yellow radioactive glass is partly impacting my choice. I just love the tones this lens produces. But it's more than that because the lens really meets the criteria set out at the start. Sharpness, good isolation and transitions, attractive bubbles, and gorgeous rendering. So the Carl Zeiss Schöner Pan Color 8 Blaze Radioactive version is my top pick amongst these Fast 50s. Hope you've enjoyed this video and has given you some insights into these great lenses. It would be really good to read any comments or suggestions you have below. I'm posting three other videos on the best bokeh lenses, so please subscribe if you're interested.